Hello and welcome to Capacity TV. I'm delighted today to introduce Andreas Hipp, CEO of Epsilon. Thank you very much. Thank you for having me. Epsilon were recently in our innovation supplements. Yeah. Uh, perhaps you can talk to me about how Epsilon are being innovative. Our CEO, Jay, who joined us, uh, who came from the, from the vendor space, uh, was looking at a project to develop um, a technology around the session border controller, which uh, provides a lot of additional features like visibility, end-to-end -end quality of service. As far as we understand from the GSMA and the industry, these kind of features have always been missing in the industry. That's why the interconnect on IP has been slowed down quite a lot. So we invested in a startup in Silicon Valley to build our own technology, which we're going to deploy in the network. And uh, early next year, we're going to launch our EI Next service which will be a fully IP-based service uh, layer on top of our private network, which guarantees you know, full service and session management and, uh, and also end-to-end -end QS. So we really want to move away from you know, static network point-to-point -point circuits and really go, go down to a service, service layer and provide uh, um, features which are beyond the simple connectivity. So that's one part of it. Uh, the other side, you know, we still a uh, network business to 75% of revenue is based on that. And uh, for, for us, you know, it's difficult to make our circuits nicer than anybody else's. Our approach to that is we can't change the commoditization. And uh, last year at ITW, we launched our Bandis Trading Exchange, which is uh, really uh, getting good traction now. And, uh, you know, like everything in the industry, mindsets change slowly sometimes. We will also bring out uh, mid next year our own, you know, we call it e commerce side of the business and really bring our entire service portfolio from network co-location and so forth online so that really customers can get real-time pricing information and inventory information and really kind of buy online. So these are our two kind of uh, approaches to, to that part of, of our business. So you, you mentioned the, um, the exchange um, and you mentioned the product, the mm. ENIX yep. product. Um, how do you think something like that's going to affect the, the wider industry and how are people going to have to evolve their business models? We have never been in the termination part of the business. We never did SMS or voice or anything like that and we don't want to be. We really concentrate on the transport side of it so everybody can really utilize our infrastructure to put their service portfolio on top of it. And what we also try to change is the commercial approach which typically in our industry is all 12 months contract, three year contract, big commitment. And uh, we decided to go for a pay-as-you-go model. So every time you send a minute or a video stream, we're going to charge you for that stream. Little, little cents. And uh, that kind of makes a really low or non-commit approach. And people can just connect to a network, don't have to worry about transcoding and different signaling standards. And we just take care of the, the global you know, interconnect part on the transit layer. So you, you mentioned pay-as-you-go mm. as, as a way to, to now do business. Yeah. Do you think the, the sort of more incumbent sort of carriers that are out there, they're going to be quite slow in that sort of transition? Do you think they'll even be able to offer that? Or? Our industry still kind of likes the you know, monthly recurring charge model and guaranteed income streams. The problem is that even on the services side, there's a lot of pressure on the, on the pricing and on the margins. And uh, we just wanted to take that hurdle away. Right? So people can really connect up and try it out. And uh, you know, if they make good business with the interconnect parties, then uh, that model should work quite well for them. And uh, uh, if they want to own our new technology, then we also sell the box. What's the next step really for? Excellent. The next step, we, we, we further expand into the region, so we're going to uh, open a small office in uh, Dubai early next year. Uh, we have a lot of uh, customers from that area for many years and uh, we just, with the increased service portfolio, with the more complexity of the services, we just need to have a you know, closer proximity to our customer base. The same happens in the US, we always uh, serve the America's markets out of our London office, but we also open an office in Virginia. To, to really cover North and uh, Latin America from, from that side. What's been quite apparent at, say, Capacity Asia is the customer base of, of carriers is, is changing all the time. Mm. Um, I mean, how, how do you see your, your customer base evolving? The market is certainly changing, and I've uh, never seen it happen so dramatically like I would say actually this year, especially in the cloud space. A lot of different providers uh, are really coming up. Interesting acquisitions like uh, Oracle buying Acme Packet. Why would a software company buy network equipment unless you intend to go into network services. So I don't know that, I don't know Oracle's strategy, but uh, assuming that could be a reason. What we also experience uh, from some data centers is that their customers partly force them into the network space as well and uh, essentially want the one-stop shop. Well, you know, data center network is infrastructure for me. 
So if you want to provide me that service, then you do all of it. And this is really changing. So you, you're going to get hardware vendors, software vendors, providing network services or cloud and access to the enterprise location because very often they want the private service and not public internet for that. So this is really changing besides the so-called OTT players and everything else comes up. I mean, most of the startups uh, recently and since we have an office in Silicon Valley, we see that as well, all the investments go into applications. There hasn't been any big investment into infrastructure or hardware suppliers really. Everything is apps. So, and uh, exactly. <laughs> so th this is this is where the future goes. And these people, they are certainly not interested in building global networks. So we we see kind of a, an interesting market for us coming up for somebody who has an application, need a global distribution platform to launch their applications and services. And I think EINX is a is a perfect example for a you know pay as you go uh, transmission model. So. So it's very much network as a service. Exactly. Yeah. Well, we call it intelligent network as a service. <laughs> <laughs> well, Andreas, it's been an absolute pleasure. So uh, thank you very thank much. You very Same much. here. Okay. Thanks, Paul. Thank you.